Liverpool's 2-1 defeat over Chelsea. In my opinion, it was a very, very good result for Liverpool, but one of the strangest games of football I've seen in some time. Number one, the officiating was absolutely abysmal, and it went on both sides. I know Chelsea fans are a little upset about the penalty shout that they had in the first half from the Trent tackle. I don't think it was a penalty, but I also think that the penalty we received was one, and I'm probably biased if I'm being honest. But no, on both ends, the refereeing was completely terrible, but I don't think it influenced the result that much. All in all, some key takeaways from the game. Number one, Cole Palmer was just non-existent. He was like Brad Pitt in Fight Club. Like, you saw him there, but I guess the point was that he was just a figment of your imagination the entire time. Yeah, Nicholas Jackson is becoming somewhat of a good footballer, in my opinion, but I just think he's Nicholas Anelka with not as good a technical ability. Outside of that, one of the biggest takeaways I think Chelsea can take is the fact that Romeo Lavia and Moises Caicedo work very, very well together. Honestly and truthfully, I know they both snubbed Liverpool, and I'm very happy with Ryan Gravenberch, but both of them are so technically gifted. I'm a upset that we didn't get at least one of them. Preferably, I would have rather Lavia, if I'm being honest. I haven't seen that many performances from him. Obviously, he was injured like all of last season, but when he has played for Chelsea, I think he's better than Enzo Fernandez. I understand why Fernandez didn't start. And yeah, one of the biggest things for Chelsea is the fact that their goalkeeper should be playing in the MLS. I mean, he is so bad. I, I almost feel bad for Chelsea fans to a certain extent. I still think Curtis Jones would have scored the goal he got. But the fact that Robert Sanchez isn't coming out to the ball, he, he's terrible. I, I'm almost surprised Chelsea in the transfer window did not go for another goalkeeper. I also wouldn't be surprised if they do so in the winter transfer window. If you're a Chelsea fan, I look at it from the perspective of like, you are obviously making improvements. You are not at the level of Liverpool, Arsenal, or Manchester City yet, but I also think you are far better than the likes of like Manchester United are. So I think that there are a lot of positives Chelsea fans can take away from that. From the Liverpool side, Salah, Salah is still good. Let, let's, let's be real. He is so composed under pressure, and the assist he got for Curtis Jones' goal, I mean, the, the guy's just spectacular. And Curtis Jones played very, very good as well. I'll be honest with you. We know Ryan Gravenberch is going to start at the six. We also know Alexis McAllister is going to fit kind of as that number eight. But I feel as though Curtis Jones could take Sobislai's spot. I haven't been that impressed with Sobel Slide this season. I feel like he's very inconsistent with his performances. I don't necessarily think he's just going to completely take his spot, but I wouldn't be surprised if Slot kind of alters them around in the starting 11 quite often. But for me, and the purpose of this video is I love Darwin Nunes. I'll be entirely honest. I was not impressed with Diogo Jota in our game against Crystal Palace right before the international break. Yes, he scored the only goal which got us three points, but he probably should have had a hat trick. There were a few opportunities that he didn't even hit the target on, and if it was Darwin Nunes, we would all be slating him online, wanting his head. And I don't really love the treatment that Nunez gets all the time, because I feel as though when he doesn't perform well, we all just jump on him, where on the flip side, when he does play well, it's just kind of like, oh yeah, you know, Nunez put in a good performance. When Jota got hurt and he came on, it completely shifted how Liverpool played. You saw Nunez coming back almost into the midfield, picking the ball up, which allowed runners to get in behind from both Gakpo and Salah. Gakpo played great, by the way. I felt like he... he offered something a little bit more that Jota wasn't when he was playing. And in the first 15 to 25 minutes in that time frame before Jota came off, Chelsea were maybe the better team. Once Nunez came on, it, it completely shifted how Liverpool were playing. The only problem with Nunez that I honestly have is the fact that he's such a hothead. But that's also, if you watched any of my other content, one of my favorite things about Darwin Nunez. He plays with a certain sense of reckless abandonment. In particular games, I feel that that's a very good attribute, and it helps us. It helps create chaos in the game, which can often help Liverpool. And I think that... He can score a lot of fantastic goals, but in this game in particular, we saw him kind of play a role which wasn't going to put him in that much of goal-scoring opportunities. Like I said, he dropped back, allowed runners in behind from the wingers, and it, it was case in point, the penalty that got ruled out for Curtis Jones, that came from a very good pass from Darwin Nunes. 
I, I also thought he was going to get sent off like three times in that game. It's a little strange to be on a yellow card and just freaking out on other players, clearly having a hissy fit with the ref. But in the clips that I have saw, Slot was doing the same thing, and technically Slot was on a yellow. So you can't really hold it against him too much. My whole thing with Darwin Nunez is just our fan base is completely unfair to the guy. I, I feel as though, like I said, when he plays bad... All of our fans are quick to jump down the guy's throat and criticize him to the high heavens. But when we see him put in a good performance, and a good performance where he didn't score but helped out the team tremendously, we're not going to see Liverpool fans online talking about how good of a shift Nunez did. He did the dirty work. He didn't do the stuff that he's going to get written about in the tabloids the next day, but he helped contribute to us getting three points. He came in and played a different role that Jota was playing, and it helped us out a lot, and nobody's talking about it. Why aren't we talking about it? Because everyone likes to, to hop on the Nunez hate train. I've seen so many creators make videos on this guy just shit-talking him for no reason. Get him out of our club. Yeah, we spent a lot of money on him, but he's still a good player, and he still does a shift for us when we call upon him. I don't know. A lot. Every video I make about Darwin Nunez, for some reason, people tell me I'm an idiot and that we should sell him. I don't think so. I think we should keep him. I think he does a really, really good shift for us. And I am a Darwin Nunez enthusiast. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, click that notification bell so you know every time I make a new video. And I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.